Oh shoot. <laughs> oh man. Um, okay. So, um, so yeah, I had my recording off for a bit, but so I'm going to go ahead and get started here with some other things though. Um, but yeah, feel free to keep asking questions. Uh, there were a couple of things that, uh, I mean, it's a little bit late to be asking questions about assignment one. So we'll, we'll see, hopefully everybody has gotten, uh, you know, at least uh, partially progressed on that, if not got it mostly completed. Um, on Monday, I did show a couple of things. I'm probably going to repeat a few of those things. Um, uh, the, there was a couple of things that I wanted people to make certain that they understand um, about running these simulations that we build for these assignments. Um, although another thing, um, uh, again, this is probably this is probably too late. Uh, but unfortunately, I had at least three people asking me questions about, um, um, they were getting an, an error message. Uh, I'll show you the error message. Um, so uh, if you got an error message when you were trying to link together your files about can't find dash l simulator exception um so this this was covered in announcements in the class and um in a couple of our help sessions but that simply means that you need to build the common um library that gets linked into all these assignments so you need to change in that libs directory so you, so if, if you go back to the top level of your repository and change into libs and you have to do a make there and that basically creates this library of, of some common functions that we use and then it should then build cleanly without that that it can't find that simulator exception so again it's a little bit late um, um, and, and Tuesday was probably a little bit late to be starting on this assignment but if they, anybody is still kind of getting started looking at this video um, um, for this class there is that extra step you probably only have to do that once once you had it made it'll be reused for all of the um, assignments after that so um, I change back to my solution here. So um, I went over this a little bit on um, Monday. Uh, so I want to repeat myself a little bit, but I, but I wanted to show again uh, using the full simulation. Um, so um, so your normal you know your normal um, workflow is you, you start by doing like a make clean. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to clean everything up because I don't want to take the time. So, so you know, you, you do make clean at the beginning. Do a make to make certain that everything's built, um, and then you can do make tests. Um, and this will run by default. This runs both the unit test and the system test. Now, you, you can run those by hand if you want to. Like, if you only want to run the system tests or the sorry, the unit tests which are the normal things that you're going to be working with as you're working on the assignments are these unit tests. Those are the things that are in the, um, um, uh, like assignment one test. Let me go to my solution here also. Uh, but yeah, it'll be something like assignment, whatever test.cpp will have what I'm calling the unit tests here, right? Those are normally the things that you have to basically implement member functions in, in these in our simulators to, to get these to pass to ultimately get the full simulation working here. So, um, so you can run just the unit tests from the command line, or you can use you can run them from inside of Visual Studio Code as I've shown before. Uh, now, notice this is all, this is basically just calling it, um, executing the shell script by hand. Uh, or not so this is actually an executable so um, when you do a make as I've talked about before uh, for this class it builds two executables it builds the test executable and the full the actual simulation so the test is just the unit tests uh, and the sim is the the full simulation which is the real ultimate thing that we're trying to do for all these assignments but you can just you can run the test by hand uh, so you can use that make um, unit test to just run them, but all it's doing is, is doing this command here, right? 
And by default, it actually does use the color, so you don't have to, to specify that. Although I did want to mention this again. I, I think I've probably mentioned this before, uh, but sometimes it's useful to show um, um, all of the tests, so not just the, the, the failing test, but also the tests that are succeeding or passing as well. So if you want to, um, and what I just did there was, instead of running my tests, I gave it the dash dash help, which printed out all of the uh, options that I can pass to it. So in particular, um, you can ask it to include successful tests with the dash S flag or the dash dash success. So this is common in uh, Unix command line tools like this. Um, you know, you have what are known as short options or long options, um, and often there's a corresponding long option for each short option. So, so these are supposed to be more readable. So if I was writing, uh, putting these in a shell script, I might use these long ones to make my code a little bit more kind of self-documenting. But on the command line, I, you know, I might just use these short flags. So, so if you want to list, uh, if you want to run the tests uh, and show both not only just the failing test, but the successful ones as well. You can use the dash S flag. So this can be useful. Um, oh, another trick here. This can be useful if, um, uh, if you have an infinite loop or if your code is crashing somewhere. So if, if you run showing all the successful ones, you'll get a better idea of exactly which tests are being run before your, before your code crashed or got into an infinite loop. By, by looking at the output from using the desk S flag. Um, I often, so, so that scrolls by real far, so it can be a little bit tough to, to scroll all the way back up to the top and see all those. So I often do what's known as piping that output into um, what's known as a pager. So less is a pager, it allows me to um, see the pages, see the output one page at a time, then you can use keys like down arrow to scroll down one line at a time and up arrow to scroll back up. Uh, and you can use a space bar to go down by a whole page, and, or you can also use page up and page down to go up and down by whole pages. Then you can Q, hit Q to quit out of that. So, uh, But yeah, notice you don't get the color coding. Um, If you tell it to, um, uh, I have to remember here. So, um, um, yeah, I probably shouldn't, I should probably skip ahead on this. But yeah, I mean, there's a way, if you do use the pager a lot, to, um, to get the color into the pager. Um, so, uh, I can't remember if you have to explicitly say use um, color with a British spelling. <laughs> C O L O U R. I'll use color, yes. So, so you have to say yes or no if you're using that flag. Let's find what that means. That's non optional. So if you get square bra brackets, that usually means like an optional sorts of things. And if you get um, uh, arrow brackets, uh, it, it has to be either yes or no. So you have to have one of those two. Um, Uh, yeah, so if you do that, you'll get these, you get the color coding um, output, but then uh, you have to add another thing to, to less to, um, I think it's dash R. Um, yeah, there we go. So uh, you might just want to remember this. Maybe I'll put this in an announcement. Um, so so if, if you do use the pager um, and 
run tests a lot from the command line, like I often do a lot of this. Um, um, uh, you can get back your color coding, which can be useful by explicitly outputting it and then using the stash R flag for the last pager to interpret those color codes again to, to get all the color. Um, um, So anyway, that, that was the test, and that, that's useful to be able to see the successful test sometimes. So, um, so I wanted to talk uh, again about the sim file and show some more examples of running the simulations by hand. So, so besides running the unit tests, uh, you can also run just the system tests. Um, and uh, again, yeah, all that's really doing is just calling the shell script called run system test uh, in uh, in your assignment directory and then that runs actually a bunch of the simulations um, and it compares the output of the simulation to the correct expected output to determine whether it's passing or failing the system test here okay so i wanted to kind of maybe show that a little bit um, so what this run system test script is doing is it's actually running your sim by hand let, let me bring up that code uh, again, so if you look in um, the file called assignment1sim.cpp, this is, this has the main function that's actually compiled to create the, the sim executable that you can run from the command line, okay? And, and this is also, um, all of our simulations are built to, to work, uh, again, as from the Unix command line or from a command line. Um, so for instance, Uh, again, instead of running multiple simulations, I could run just a single simulation. Um, if you don't specify, or, or you can ask for help again. If you ask for help, you'll get the, the usage message. Okay. So, so most of, uh, of the simulations that we build are a lot simpler than like the uh, the test uh, main. So in this case, it, it basically takes two required parameters. So you have to specify the maximum number of machine cycles on the command line and the, the the name of the input file that you want to use, okay? So I've mentioned these before. So um, for all of these um, assignments, there's gonna usually be a, a subdirectory, excuse me, a subdirectory called sim files, which will have a bunch of different simulations that you can use, that we can use for testing and stuff. So, um, for example, we can look at program1.sim here. And, uh, I'll bring it up so we can see both of that in my terminal at the same time. So if you want to run this stuff by hand, there's no hooks in Visual Studio Code for like running the system test by hand stuff. So you really do have to bring up a terminal, although you could use the built-in terminal in Visual Studio Code or just bring up um, a separate uh, terminal. So, um, but yeah, that's like the program one sim. So if you look at this, what this is really specifying is like the, um, the hypothetical machine simulations we did by hand for the first problem set. This is the contents of memory. Um, so 300 has this in it, memory address 301 has this in it, and so on. And these are the contents of registers of the program counter and the accumulator. Are they really the only contents you need initially at the start of the simulator? Uh, but I can, I can execute this simulation. So if I want to, I can say run the simulation for a maximum of say 100 cycles um, on the simulation. So the simulation is in my sim files subdirectory um, and it's called program01.sim. Okay. Um, so in this case, uh, it actually just runs three fetch execute size. So the, the, the max cycles is it'll run up to 100 if there's like an imp, if the program that's being simulated has an infinite loop or is more than 100 instructions. Uh, but it will stop. Uh, so in this case, uh, there's no instruction 303 and there's no jumps in here. Um, so when it gets to 303, um, it, it, it finds that there's a zero in there um, and, it, and that's interpreted as a halt. So you can look through this, uh, kind of running it by hand. So it started off at program counter 300. Um, so, that, so for the fetch stage, it, it fetched the 1940 into the instruction register. And then for the execute stage, we're executing the instruction 1940. So that's, uh, so we first decode that, which was part of the stuff you had to do for this assignment um, um, in the, the fetch method um, for your hypothetical machine. 
Um, so the op code is a one, the first digit of this, and then the address portion is 940. So after the decode, we have that, and then when we execute that, a well, one is a load. So it's gonna load the value from memory three, 940, which is a three, into the accumulator. So that, that, was, that was the final result of the execute, is we get the three into our accumulator. Right. And then we move on to the next cycle, and, and also the program counter was incremented um, after our fetch to 301 because the, the standard computing um, cycle is to do sequential execution, right? Um, um, so, and, and I shouldn't step through these, uh, so for the cycle two, we end up uh, fetching the 5941. That's an add, so it's gonna add the, the value of two into three, and we end up with the result a five decimal uh, in the accumulator. In our third cycle, we, we fetch from the 302, which is 2941, which is a store. So we end up storing this five over uh, out, out to 941. Right? Then on cycle four, uh, we actually don't have anything in memory 303. So that's interpreted as um, a zero, which is interpreted as a halt instruction. So that halts execution um, at that point. Um, so yeah, I, I, you know, I just kind of wanted to show that. So for example, um, now that you've got a working um, hypothetical machine simulator running, uh, you could go back and like verify your problem set questions, you know, so this was the problem set that I gave you guys um, for this class. Let me just skip. I'm just going to do one of these instead of doing all these. But uh, number four was was this one. If I remember, this is a, a, has a jump in there. It's actually an infinite loop, so um, it will actually run forever if you don't have like a max cycles here. Um, but um, I think, um, although I still haven't had a chance to check this, um, I had some things in sim files called Problems, program problem set 0123, but these might not be for the ones that I gave you this semester. Let me double check that here. So um, we'll see what, what program I had. Uh, so, so yeah, they weren't the same one. So, so yeah, if you guys want to actually do, oh no, um, this was problem four here. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah, I, I think these were from a different semester, so I might not have exactly the same problem set questions I gave you. So in that case, um, I mean, um, if you did want to try and check your uh, work by hand, uh, you might have to go in here and either create a new simulation file, uh, which I might do. Um, I might just create a new simulation file here instead of overriding these. So. Um, just to show you how these work here. I'm gonna copy and paste this so I don't have to, um, um, but let's create like a new file. Uh, actually, I won't even put it in SIM file. I'm just gonna put it right in my directory, um, call it um, problem set 04.sim. And, um, but, but yeah, I'm just gonna make it to the actual problem set that you guys had, um, 5940, 4941, 3301, and then we have a five, at 940 and a one at 941. And the program is counter starts at 300 and the accumulator at three. Okay. So this should be um, the, the fourth question for the problem set that, uh, that you all had uh, for your semester here. So if you wanted to, you know, you could check the answer that I gave, I gave you guys um, with the simulator that we now have. So, um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I just put this into my current directory as a file called problemset04.sim. So we can confirm that um, it is the one I was just editing there. 
um, and we can run it. So I can run my simulation. Um, so I know this is an infinite loop, but I'm, I'm just going to have it run, let's say, the first five cycles. Or how about six? I don't know, how about uh, eight? So you, had, you guys had to do a max of eight cycles. I'm um, oh, sorry, you guys had to do it like a max of four fetch execute cycles. Um, so so um, that was all the cells I gave you, or, or eight total fetch executes. So. Um, so there we're, we're running it um, for just the first four cycles. So we start off by um, fetching the, the 5940, um, and that's an add instruction. So we're going to add. Uh, five to the accumulator, which is three, and we get an eight, right? And then for the second cycle, uh, we fetch from 301, that's 4941, so that's to subtract. So we're going to take the eight minus the one, which is, um, which is up with the result of seven. Now the third cycle is 3301, so we fetch, um, uh, is we're fetching from 302, that's the instruction 3301, that's actually, actually a jump. So the result of that, as you can see, is it actually changes the program counter back to 301. Right? And in our fourth cycle, we, we redo the um, subtraction again. So we, um, um, uh, we, we fetch the 4941 4, from memory, um, and which is a subtract from 941, so we take the seven minus one. You say. So if we kept running that, it would, it would keep just decrementing that um, and it's it is an infinite loop so we just keep doing that forever um, so the first hundred cycles you know, decrements it all the way down to negative 42 so, um, So uh, now the the um, so the question was about when the assignment was due. So uh, all all assignments are due on Wednesday. Um, um, so if, if you look, I mean that's that's the way it's always been set. Uh, today at five p.m. So so yeah, I mean hopefully everybody uh, uh, kind of knows about that. Uh, at five p.m. I was going to go out um, and send reminders. See. Uh, which people had submitted and which hadn't. Um, it looks like I've gotten, eh, I've gotten quite a few already, although some of those might be um, some, uh, some late problem sets, but um, over half so far have submitted it. So. But yeah, probably at five. Um, I guess for, for, for the, the ones here, so I don't know if anybody else will be able to hear this since I won't get it. Um, Um, it's shown at some Wednesday at 5 p.m. Uh, for me when I look at it. Uh, let me let me check. Uh, and it's always been that. I mean, if it does say that somewhere, that's fine. But yeah, I'm still expecting them at five today, uh, unless I have a mistake somewhere. But but yeah, even if you're not ready to do it today, uh, probably I'm still going to be accepting things by midnight tonight, uh, at least with no penalty. So you might want to at least try and get something in today if you can. Um, oh, no, I've only got the one section here. So let's check here. Yep, yep, you're right. Okay, so it's going to end up being due with Thursday. So... Don't know what the mismatch is on that, but yeah, I, I do see that 28th here now when I go right down to the content, even though, um, okay, so um, yeah, I guess <laughs> I guess you're you're safe there. Um, so so yeah, I guess things are officially gonna be due, due tomorrow at five. So usually these things are gonna be due on Wednesday. I'll probably go back and check. Um, yeah, I had meant for that to be today, but, uh, but yeah, since it says Thursday, um, so it's going to have to be officially Thursday at five for this first assignment. So yeah, I'm just going to leave that. I don't know why I got it Thursday. Oh no, it does say 20th. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's going to be Thursday at five then. So. Um, all right, well, so yeah, you guys got a little bit longer than I thought I'd given you for that one. Um,
Okay, yeah. So I think that, um, um, I don't know, that, that was kind of most of the stuff that I'd been hoping to go through today. Um, did, um, uh, I might pause my recording here. Um, okay, so yeah, those are kind of the main things that I was hoping to show people today. So um, as I just found out, um, if you're watching this uh, after I upload this, uh, you still do have till Thursday. So, um, and um, you do Thursday at five. Um, I'll probably be checking, make certain that you are submitting the correct file because most of the stuff is auto graded. Um, so you do need to use that make submit um, to get your uh, assignment one tar.gz and that needs to be uploaded so that it'll run through the auto grader correctly. So. Um, all right, so I mean, as usual, you know, you can certainly email questions if, if people are watching this after the fact. Um, um, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end the session for today. Um, yeah, hopefully, everybody uh, does well in the first assignment, and I hope you guys all get it turned in. So, yeah, I'll see you guys later then.